So right now I'm going to go ahead and break down the areas, those factors that we can't see that really helped me to unlock a, a new part of my upper register. And the first area is the positioning. Can you stop? And the first area is the positioning of the tongue inside the mouth. I can tell you that hardly any of the teachers that I studied with really spoke very much about the tongue. I know that some schools of thought don't like to mention the tongue at all. And that's fine. Hey, whatever works for you, that's fine. But for me and for where I'm coming from, you know, by the way, that's really important. Where are you, where are you coming from? Because the, I, I strongly believe that there are people who naturally play with an elevated tongue position and they don't even know it. It's just normal for them. And things like uh, playing in the low register might give them some trouble, but they might have uh, gravitated towards playing those high notes because uh, it was a little bit easier for them. That's cool. That's fine. But then there are others who come from, and I think this is the way more common issue, that, that come from really being open. And I, I got to say, it's probably because of the way we learned how to play in, in elementary band. You know, what are the first notes they teach you? Low C. Why? Why don't they start you on middle G? Why don't you, why don't you work with a beginning student and actually train them to create the middle G sound on the trumpet before any other note? I wonder how many trumpet players would have a much easier time of navigating range on the instrument if that were their baseline. I digress. I want to show you the reason why I started experimenting with tongue position. And I've been saying all along that this is something we can't see, but hey, maybe we can see something. This little video snippet is from Sarah's Horn Hangouts, which is a vlog uh, and podcast by Sarah Willis. Now, Sarah Willis is not just a French horn player. She is one of the greatest French horn players in the world. She is in the Berlin Philharmonic. And she has a wonderful podcast. If you haven't seen it, Arturo Sandoval has been on there. Wynton Marsalis has been on there. Well, in this episode, she agreed to play, I'm assuming, a plastic horn and to lay down and to get inside an MRI machine so that you could see... A, a an x-ray kind of video readout of her actually playing and see what's happening inside her mouth. Take a look at this. She starts this exercise. She's going to go from her extreme low register, and then she's going to keep ascending the partials, the harmonic series, all the way up into her extreme upper register. Pay attention to her lips, pay attention to her jaw, and see how, you know, covering that wide of range affects kind of the front of her mouth. Take a look. So I observed a couple of things here. Number one, her tongue not only started low in the low register, but it also started kind of back in her mouth. And then as she ascended, it started coming up and forward until at the very, very top of her range, the tip of the tongue was right there at the precipice of her aperture. The other thing I noticed is that her lips never seemed to actually get too wide open, even in the extreme low register. It was really her tongue getting way down, but her lips were closer together, but they were a little bit separated. And then as she got into her upper register, they got really close together, right? And, and you could see the, the jaw come up a little bit. And then as she descended, she started up 
top and she started articulating notes and came all the way back down. That's when you see her kind of return, open her lips slightly, the jaw comes down. But again, it doesn't get like wide open, otherwise her lips wouldn't vibrate. I've got another example that I want you to check out, also a, an even shorter video. This is from Douglas Yeo, who is principal trombone of the Boston Symphony. And guess what? This year happens to be my colleague at the University of Illinois, where he's going to be teaching for this entire year. Take a look at this similar video of him playing a range exercise on the trombone. All right, so we're going to watch this video a couple of more times. It's super short. This time around, I want you to just, just pay attention to the movement of the tongue specifically. I really like this video because he's got that constant low note that he comes back to every time and he keeps expanding the range, you know, one partial at a time. So this really shows you how he's set up in the low register and what he needs to do to play in the upper register. You saw the back of his tongue really dancing around in his mouth, especially as the intervals got really wide apart. Now I want you to watch the video one more time and I want you to pay attention to his aperture, his lips area, and to his jaw. In this example, you really see a lot of movement with the jaw and with and with the lips it almost seems like the the jaw is moving with the movements of the tongue and so watching this really confirmed with me hey if it's good enough for principal trombone of the boston symphony if it's good enough for uh, uh berlin philharmonic level french horn master it's good enough for me so a couple of things i want to tell you about utilizing the tongue. It's important to think about the syllables for the various registers that you're in. Uh, here are the syllables that I like to use. They might be a little bit different than what you've heard in the past. So when I think of the low register, I think of aw, right? Everybody say aw. And then middle register, maybe it's because of my bilingual status, but I like to think eh, eh, eh. Almost like saying eh, what's the matter with you? Eh, ah, eh. And then as we get into the upper register is ah, eh, e, e, ah, eh, e, sh. Now, here's what is very important. I know a lot of people struggle with throat constriction. And I'm here to say that the throat really has no business in, uh, in trumpet playing as far as I'm concerned. I think you should be able to shift the movement of your tongue, the positioning of your tongue inside your mouth without engaging the throat. And I want you to practice that right now by simply uh, blowing air while shifting your tongue position from aw to e uh to e and back down without stopping that air even once. So it's going to be like this. You even hear the sound that the air is making from my, hopefully I'm not like blowing it like it's a windstorm here, but hopefully you can hear the sound of my airstream changing, right? Listen one more time. I'm shifting between those different size straws. That's the way I'm thinking about it. Yeah.